Hey, what's going on? It's Chaos here with a Minecraft tutorial on making your own Minecraft 1.20 server for free with the latest snapshots. So first we're gonna do this client side. So installations, snapshots, latest snapshot. You could click play there or you could go to it, play. So now we're gonna make a new world. None of this stuff matters, I guess for its simplicity later. Let's just call this 1.20 snapshot. That way it's easily identifiable. Uh, I guess we'll put this on. The main important part here is experiments and we need to turn these on. The other way to do that would be to go to more and data packs and put those data packs in. But either way, that's what we have to do. Now we're gonna create the world. All right, once the world is created, there's nothing we have to do inside of it. Although I guess if you wanted to test, make sure it's working, let's do like summon sniffer. Perfect, so now we know that it's working. So let's just close this, close the game. We'll get back to that later, but for now we're gonna go to Google and type in Java and don't do this download. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's not like a virus or anything, but it's an outdated Java for what Minecraft needs now. Mine was broken, tried to figure out why. After some research, I figured it out. Go to the one that's Oracle, then go to download Java and make sure you're on Java 17 here because that's the long lasting supported one. Go to Windows and now I don't think it matters, but I just like doing the Time64 installer. You'll see this download on our computer. Um. Let's just run this right now. Okay, so it should look something like this. Next, I don't think this matters. You could pick a spot for it if you wanted, but I'm just gonna do it. There we go. Now that's installed, close that. And now we're gonna go and close this tab. Now we wanna get our actual server files. So type in Minecraft snapshot 23w7a, click this. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, not all the way down, there we go. <laughs> and right here you'll see cross platform server jar, Minecraft server jar, click this to download that. And this is a Java file, so that's why we got Java earlier. So you can put the server jar wherever you want. For me, I have a spot for my folders related to Minecraft and Terraria. So we're gonna do new folder, call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it 1.20 snapshot server and then open this up and we're gonna take the server.jar that we downloaded drag it in run this you're gonna see it create a couple folders and files and then if you tried to run it now it wouldn't work yet what you need to do is go to this eula and change false to true And then one more thing we wanna do that we accounted for earlier is if you push your Windows button and R, uh, yours should be empty, so let me just backspace, and you're gonna type percent app data percent, like so, hit okay, and then open your dot Minecraft folder, and yours will probably be less crowded than this. I've done a lot of Minecraft stuff over the years, but we're gonna go to saves, Find the world you created earlier, whatever you named it. As you saw, mine was 1.20 snapshot. And we're actually just gonna take this entire folder. So what I'm gonna do is copy it, paste it. Uh, let me just do control V, there we go. And then rename this to world, all lowercase. And now this will be our world file. And so the reason we did that is because it saves that data pack stuff we did earlier. Otherwise, this wouldn't work. I tried it, I did some research on this, it wasn't working, this is the solution. So now, if we were to run our server.jar, and allow access, it's just Java, it's just Minecraft, um, it would open up a server, but this server is very limited in what it could do, so there's some stuff we wanna do now. We're gonna go to view here, show file name extensions. You want this checked so that it looks like this. And then we're going to do new text document and call it start dot change the txt to bat. Yes. 
And then I saved this so that I wouldn't have to remember it, but I'll go over this now in a second. We're going to edit. I'm going to paste this in. You'll type this. So it's Java, a space, a minus, capital X, lowercase mx, and then this is the amount of RAM you're giving it. So depending on your system, you probably have 8, 16, or 32 gigabytes. What most people have is 16, I'd say. I have 32, so I'm comfortable giving this anywhere from like 8 to 16 as a maximum. Won't always use that much. If you have 16, I'd say don't give it any more than 8. I'd say do like 4 to 8. But yeah, default is 2, so that's why we're making this. And uh, sorry, space minus jar, server.jar or whatever the name of your server file is, but yours should be called this. If not, just make sure they're the same. No GUI. Um, so now we're going to save that. And this is the new way we'll launch the server from this point onward. So whenever you want to launch your server, you'll open this file and you'll see it opens a command prompt now as opposed to that other window. And that's how you know you did it right. And also, if you tried to do this and these things instantly close, it would be because you skipped the Java step or your Java is outdated as mine was. I thought mine was up to date, but it wasn't. So you have to do what I did at the beginning of the video. Uh, to stop your server, you can always just type stop. And so now we have a working server and it's 1.20, but there's one key thing missing and that's being able to have your friends connect to it. So that's what this ngrok tab is for. We're going to type in ngrok, go to it, go to download, download Windows 64 bit. Now we're going to show in folder and this should be, yeah. So we're just going to extract it. Cool. You could also have like pulled it out and copied it. I like putting this in a certain folder. You don't necessarily have to. This is just how I stay organized. Uh, so I'm going to create a new folder. Call it ngrok. Doesn't have to be. This is just, like I said, how I organize it. Move this here. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to put this in a folder this time around. <laughs> I mean, I'm putting it in this folder, but yeah, I'm just going to run this. And so now we have this command line, but this means nothing to you right now. So what we're going to do is just minimize this for now. And just bear with me. I know this is starting to get confusing, but I'll pull it all together and it's all going to make sense soon. <laughs> So I, for me, it's login. You would click sign up. It would pop up with like a little email thing and you can either do email or I'd recommend just signing up with Google, but either way, I'm going to take this, copy it, and then do ngrok tcp minus minus region us two five five six five for the united states your ip within the forwarding section for the server is the part that starts with zero dot tcp all the way up until the final numbers it also might start with a different number like four dot tcp i've seen things like that but yeah that'll be your server ip so we're going to copy go to your server folder Launch your start.bat that you created earlier. Wait for it to load up. You'll know it's done when it says done and the preparing spawn area was finished. Let's open up the Minecraft launcher. Make sure you launch the latest snapshot. Also, if you want to adjust anything within that, you would do it here. Um, I'm going to leave mine at four. That's probably good. That's the, it works the same way as with the server. It's how much of your RAM you're giving it. So you have to balance between the server and the client. The server is more important than the client, but both are important. So just want to especially get that point across. Now if we go to multiplayer and you can do an ad server or a direct connection, it doesn't matter. But 
essentially what you name the server if you're adding the server won't matter but what matters is your server address here join server and if you did everything correctly you should have a server now if you tried to do a command you'll notice it won't work so what you have to do is op your minecraft username in the command prompt and now you should see it in chat and now if i did some in sniff okay not sure how that happened we need to delete world and rename the 1.20 snapshot one to world i could have sworn i did that but i guess we didn't uh so that was what went wrong now aha oh that's really weird that he's actually there oh because i summoned one in the old one yeah, summon camel, locate biome cherry grove, and teleport to it. This is a cool cherry biome. But anyway, um, yeah, now you have a working Minecraft 1.20 snapshot server. Hopefully this was helpful. Sorry if it was confusing. Um, but honestly, this is probably the simplest tutorial out there for doing it on your own without paying for any kind of server hosting or using one of those trash server hostings that are free that only give you two gigabytes and it's just too laggy. So this will give you an opportunity to actually have a nice, smooth working server for you and your friends to enjoy. This has been Chaos. Please like and subscribe if it helps and I'll catch you with the next one. Peace.